All right, I'm soaking wet and I'm in the back seat of my car because it's the only place where I can kind of get semi-decent lighting in the dark. I just saw Bohemian Rhapsody and needless to say, uh, I'm of two minds of the movie, okay? It's the ultimate paint by numbers biopic. Hot damn, is it really raining out here? Uh, it is the ultimate paint by numbers biopic but on the other hand, it is a crowd pleaser. But here's the thing, if you go into this movie with any prior background knowledge about Queen, then you're probably going to be really frustrated with some of the choices that this movie makes. I mean, for the most part, it's predicated on you really not knowing that much about Freddie Mercury and about the nature of Queen in the sense that, okay, there are things there are events that happen. I'm trying not to go into spoiler territory, but basically there are events that happen that are completely contradicted by verifiable facts. Uh, and you don't even really have to know that much about Queen to know that that certain thing didn't happen. But also there are certain embellishments that are made to this story. I mean, I think the big thing that the movie latched onto that they didn't go far enough with is the idea that Queen was a band of outsiders that made music for outsiders. Now, personally, I don't know that I know enough about Queen to really speak intelligently about whether or not that statement is true. But what I do know is that Queen's music has endured across the eras of music. You know, it's a very... It's a sound that's very much of its era, but also timeless in the same way, in that if, in a sense, they are outsiders making outsider music, who became sort of the mainstream, where there is nowhere that Queen music does not belong. You can play Queen at a bar, you can play it at a roller rink, you can play it at, you know, a club, you can play it at a sports game. There is nowhere on earth where Queen sounds out of place, other than maybe a funeral. And even then, Who Wants to Live Forever is a great song. You, you know, Highlander's a great movie. Uh, if you're looking for a great Friday night movie, you can't go wrong with Highlander. But also, I think where the movie kind of missed the boat, more than with the factual embellishments and the things that aren't really true, uh, I'll, I'll just spoil one thing. Plug your ears if you don't really want to know, but... In the movie, they have Freddy diagnosed with AIDS far earlier than he actually was in real life. And they also have the band break up and then sort of get back together for the Live Aid concert in 1985, which happened when I was two days old. And um, it's one of those things where, okay, in the grand scheme of things, how big of a deal is it really? But also the way in which they portray Freddie Mercury is they sort of paint him as this overtly homosexual man long before he ever comes out. Now, again, I don't know how true that is, but they're almost playing him up as a caricature and that didn't really sit well with me. I don't really know why. It's almost like, okay, Rami Malek did a great job. I'm not knocking him. He only did what he was asked to do. And this isn't even getting into my whole issue with Brian Singer having directed a portion of this movie, which, I mean, I don't like supporting somebody like Brian Singer, but I want to support everybody else, if that makes any sense. But basically, Rami Malek did what he was asked to do, but I feel like so much of his performance is a performance, you know? Uh, you have everyone else taking this more naturalistic tone, whereas you, whereas Freddie is the most, you know, over-the-top person in a room, which I don't doubt was true in real life in places, but for the most part, everything that I've ever, re ever read about Freddie Mercury is that he's kind of a shy guy, or was a shy guy, and that he was kind of not as flamboyant as he was being depicted. I mean, this he literally has, and ends every other phrase with, like, darling, or, you know, in a very flamboyant kind of way, and it kind of struck me as an odd tone to take when everyone else was just presenting this more... 
naturalistic performance where I didn't get the sense in those early scenes in like the first hour of the movie that Freddie Mercury was an actual human being. He felt like, you know, a, a stage character, like this pastiche of different rock star stereotypes dropped into the middle of a movie that was more grounded than the movie he was actually starring in. Now, to speak more pointedly about that first hour, the first hour of this movie is possibly the most rushed of any movie that I've ever seen. I think you go from being introduced to Freddie Mercury to them already having their first hit in the first, like, 20 minutes. It's almost like this movie only wanted to tell the story of the downfall, but they didn't actually want to tell the story of the rise. But the problem is that the redemption arc has less meaning because we rushed through the rise so fast and we didn't really establish that bond and what this band meant to each other in the early going. You know, you get the constant repetition that, hey, we're like family and we're a family, but you don't really get that feeling because they rushed through everything so quickly. You know, there is no sense that, hey, we've made it. Like, there is that sense to a degree, but there's no sense of how surreal it is to suddenly go from singing in these poorly attended bars and clubs to suddenly selling out arenas in Rio. You know what I mean? And granted, every biopic does that. Every music biopic especially. Um, sorry for the shaking, I'm just not very good at vlogging, and I don't have anything to prop this up on right now, because I'm very low budget. I think, basically, I wish the movie had invested more in the front end, because the back end is really where the movie shines. Uh, granted, you're able to overlook some of the embellishments that they make on facts, but... I think, for the most part, it's a good movie, you know? It's hard not to want to cheer towards the end of the movie, you know? It, it, but a lot of it is a Pavlovian response to the music, because the music is the thing that is generating a lot of the emotions. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but there has to be more there. There has to be more substance there, and I'm not sure there is. But needless to say, I left the movie very satisfied regardless, because it left me... The final impression was a good one. It left me feeling good. It was this kind of feeling of triumph, and because that final 20 minutes of the movie is just so well done that I had a hard time really leaving any other way but satisfied. So, overall, I'd give it kind of like a thumbs in the middle, leaning towards up. It's a very easy movie to watch. It's the most paint-by-numbers music biopic ever. I mean, it's almost like w watching Walk Hard. You know, you don't really realize how hard the movie Walk Hard nailed music biopics until you've seen enough of them, like Walk the Line and, you know, movies like this. You get the story of the rise and the fall, but you also have the, the cliches of, like, the band with the broken down van on the side of the road, or, you know, the music executive who doubts them and says their most iconic hit will never be a hit. You know, that type of thing, which... You know, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't, but this is not a movie that wants to tread any new ground. And the big thing that kind of got me about it was half the movie, for as good as Rami Malek was, I kept wondering what Sacha Baron Cohen would have done with this movie if he'd had the chance to make the Queen movie that he really wanted to make. And yet, by the same token, I kind of found myself wondering what the movie would have been like if the members of Queen had been allowed to make the movie that they originally wanted to make, which is sort of a movie where Freddy dies halfway through, and then it's about the band sort of piecing themselves up back together with this sort of specter, this, this lost piece of their family or their band in the middle of it, you know? That Freddy leaves such a huge gap in the soul of Queen that you almost wonder, well, what becomes of Queen? And it's a 
question that's almost worth exploring, but that would be a completely different movie. And by the same token, Sasha Baron Cohen, I feel, just as I, as I was watching it, I feel like his physicality would have been more suited to the role, as strange as that sounds, because the movie does kind of go overboard with the prosthetics, uh, teeth-wise, to kind of make Rami Malek fit the role of Freddie Mercury. Now, I'm not saying they still wouldn't have had to do that with uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, but I feel like... I almost feel like there's this rawness to Sasha Baron Cohen and this sort of fearlessness. If that, I mean, anyone who's seen like Borat or Bruno or, you know, Ali G, like, you know, the guy kind of has to be fearless to do what he does. No, I'm not saying it's the same kind of skill set that would transfer to a Freddie Mercury biopic, but I think he would have been better for the role, and it's a shame that I don't think we'll ever get to see how his version of the role would have come out, you know? But, I mean, yeah, I liked it. I mean, I know there are people who are not going to because of how fast and loose it plays with the sort of mythos of Queen, but ultimately, I, th I think the movie did not aspire to be the definitive telling of the Queen story. All the hits are coming through here. And in a way, the movie doesn't aspire to be more than that. But I think they missed the mark in that it could have been a movie about creation. Because I think that's really where the story is. Is watching the artistry of the music and what set Queen apart from other bands of its era, you know? Because they kept sort of reinventing themselves, you know, over the years. Or at least that's the impression we're made to believe. You know, my favorite part of the movie is when they're putting Bohemian Rhapsody, the song, together. And it doesn't go on long enough. And then there's another scene where they're writing, you know, Another One Bites the Dust. Or We Will Rock You. And those are all scenes that don't go on nearly long enough. Because the movie isn't interested in creation. It's interested in gratification, in the immediacy of what that music does in its final form, of how it makes us feel. But in doing that, in telling that story and presenting the movie in that way, I think they left a lot on the table. So this is a movie that while I... Bleh. So this is a movie that while I enjoyed it, I couldn't help but thinking about all the other things that could have been done with this story and with this cast, and I don't know. It's a good movie, but I don't see it necessarily being something that you should feel compelled to run out of your way to go see immediately. But I didn't hate it. <laughs> you know? I It's thumbs in the middle leaning towards up, because... You know, well, first of all, I'm notoriously easy to please, which anyone reviewing a movie shouldn't say, because then that's just a license to never take my opinion seriously. But then, who really takes my opinion that seriously anyway? Yeah, I liked it. So sue me. But I think it could have been so much more than it was. So, if you saw the movie, or if you plan on seeing the movie, um, I don't know. Just let me know what you think in the comments. That, wait, that makes no sense, because if you haven't seen the movie yet, how can you let me know what you think? Um, ah! Just say whatever you want in the comments. You could uh, tell me a joke or something. Um, but thank you for watching, and have a good one. And hopefully this rain will eventually stop.